Ed was an offensive lineman for the Hurricanes and the Dolphins, and Rodney Miller wins the tip, and Chris Likes leads the way for the Canes. Chris is playing with a very tender groin. He hurt himself in a valiant effort against Florida State on Saturday. This is what Duke has done to Likes, Dick. They don't let him get the ball back if he gives it up. He's sixth in the ACC in scoring. You know, he's two for 15 against them in game one. Nice ball fake. E.J. Vasilovich misses his first shot, and Trey Jones going the other way for the Blue Devils. It's the customary lineup of late for Duke as Matthew Hurd shoots in the corner and puts him up 3-0. The mm -hmm. two veteran guards, Jones and Goldwire, with the freshman Hurt carrying Cassius Stanley. Well, they do a great job putting pressure on the basketball. Goldwire is solid defensively, and we know Trey Jones can. Hey, Hurt can flat out stroke the three. Stanley gives up the baseline to Vasilovich, but he forces him into a travel. This would really hurt Miami in a game with Florida State. They played Florida State, showed me Coach K on the sideline. He was not a happy camper. He thought there was not enough freedom of movement of his players in that Louisville game. For both teams, he said, both teams. That was the thing he really emphasized in the aftermath of the game, that he wasn't saying that was the reason why. He said Louisville could have beaten them other ways. Hurt. Steps back, and he's two for two. Wow. He can stroke. I tell you this, he's got that good-looking stroke. I'm not saying, I want to make this very clear, please don't take this, I'm saying Larry Bird, but as a young guy, the way he strokes it with that feathery touch, he's got that bird touch. Chris Likes, as you mentioned, 2 of 15 in the first meeting, a 33-point loss for the Hurricanes. He's just hit three of his last 30, now 31 shots against the Blue Devils. He's really struggled in his career because Jim Laranega told us today that he, Trey Jones is the toughest guy for likes to get his shot off against him to get good looks and everything Miami does runs through their young guard. There's Cam McGusty missing and Rodney Miller's there to tip it home. Nice little tip in by Miller on the interior. Got good post position. Speaking of post position. Carry out to Jones. That's the one area he's got to improve on. He's got to be consistent shooter from the perimeter he does everything well the kid is a catalyst to a team good early start by Duke but Jones has improved that shooting Dick he uh, really struggled last year he wasn't counted on for a lot of offense with Zion Williamson Cam Reddish RJ Barrett but he's improved he's shooting in the mid 30s from three he's been shooting a lot more of late the last three games he's had at least 15 field goal attempts well, they want him to do that. Coach K wants to be a little bit more assertive, but take quality shots. Nice look. Two good ball good movement. Passes. You know, one thing about Miami, they're well coached, they're well drilled, a little short on talent, have some key injuries to players. A couple of big guys out, Keith Stone. They were five and one when he was playing. And Keith Stone, the transfer from Florida, who's out with a knee injury. They've also lost Dane Gack, who was playing well. Carey misses, and Duke has a five-point lead. Carl, thank you very much, and welcome to those of you who just watched Kentucky finish off Georgia, though it did take a little while to actually do the finishing. Duke has gotten off to a quick start here tonight. Reese Davis, Dick Vitale, and Brooke Weisbrook. Matthew Hurd hit his first two threes. Trey Jones has hit one. And now Vernon Carey has a two, and Duke's up by seven. That's a big advantage in the post. He's so strong down in that box. Vernon Carey, Miami area. Certainly was in a picture with Miami, but it was absolutely Duke, Miami, down the stretch, along with also involved with Kentucky and Carolina. Could have involved with a lot of schools. Everybody wanted them. Well, they were hoping that Dad being a standout offensive lineman for the Hurricanes and for the Dolphins would play in their favor. But it's really, it's really hard to blame anybody for not wanting to play in this environment. Jim Laranega has done just a sensational job. And though the last couple of meetings with the Blue Devils haven't gone his way, uh, he's got five wins against Duke since he took over at Miami now in his ninth season. As that last foul was called on Carey. And Carey has been a little bit prone to foul trouble as DJ Vasilovich hits the shot along the baseline. Well, he got a little foul trouble against Louisville. And he was not, in the last four games, three of them has not been the way he's played earlier in the year. In fact, Mike told us before the game, he's been better than what they even expected here. He's the candidate for player of the year in the conference. He's taking a break now as Javin Delorier is checked in, one of the captains for the Blue Devils. They're a deeper 
Blue Devil team that have been in the past. Here's Cash is standing his first shot of the night. Man, I was here on Saturday night, Dick. He was sensational and, and valiant in the losing effort against Louisville. Well, I'm going to tell you this. If he improves his perimeter shot, he's such an unbelievable athlete going up and down the floor. He's quick. He's explosive. His stock could go way, way up. He had 24 and 11, and Chris Like struggles against the Blue Devils, at least in the early going, have continued. Jones gets by Likes. That's blocked by Miller. Wardenberg then saved it off of Jones' back, I think. Let's see which way Roger Ayers is pointing. Duke off to a quick start in ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Progressive Insurance. Visit Progressive.com and in part by Boost Mobile. Switch now and get unlimited gigs for the whole family to switch. First. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com and in part by Boost Mobile. Switch now and get unlimited gigs for the whole family. The switch gives you more. Let's check in with Brooke Weisbrod now with more on Cassius Stanley. Brooke. The name of the game tonight, especially for Cassius guys, is toughness. Duke's been talking about it, and Coach K told us before the game that the best way to learn is through experience. So Cassius made sure he got out on the floor 90 minutes before tip tonight. He was one of the first guys out here getting shots up. He had those 24 points against Louisville. Good bounce back game after the Clemson performance. And guys, he says he gets his toughness actually from his mom, Tanya, who is a track star at UCLA. Certainly not the laid back LA guy we expected. <laughs> Same high school as Marvin Bagley. You see what he's done over his last five games. Mike Krzyzewski saying before the Louisville game, he's really you know, started to find his voice a little bit with this team as a leader. Well, in the last two games, he's been so effective, 14 and 24. We know he can run in the, down the court. He's zoning right now. This is something Laranega said today that they use as a little bit of a changeup. Miami's been mostly a man defense team this year. They're physically hurt big time. He's good zone possession for Miami. Jones got the shot away. Miami comes out of there with it. Harlan Beverly, the freshman, number five, has the ball for the Canes. Jack Wyatt has checked into the game for Duke. Got to get more ball movement. Too much dribble, dribble, dribble. Got to move the basketball. Good ball fake. Well, strong. Miller with good position. He'll try it again. He misses twice with the left. Good effort, Jones. Gets it back a third time. and. A fresh 20. Vasilovic from the corner, no good. Wow, four times they're going to get the ball. Coach K can't be pleased with that. That's an example of a little toughness right there. Miami was a little tougher to them on that possession. You got to score it off if you get the ball four times, Reese. Come on. Be demoralizing if you don't. Shot clock at seven. Likes into the paint. Chris continues to struggle and they have four shots at it, Dig, and didn't get a bucket. Stay with that zone, trying to protect players who are injured, including likes. Play with that hip flexor problem. Jones up the side of the backboard. Shot clock did not reset. Jordan Goldwire scores. Goldwire comes up with the loose ball. See, that's the one area in the zone a lot of times. Can't block out. Guys don't block out. And loose balls come back like a different Goldwire, and he made it converted. Well, the issue for Miami, Dick, is they've had so many injuries that they haven't really been able to practice. They don't play a lot of zone. Hey, I did a game a couple of weeks ago. They started in zone against Louisville and promptly got behind by 20 points, switched to man and got back in the game. But a little, a couple of effective possessions now playing the zone. Beverly rushed the follow and Blue Devils with a 10 point lead in the ball. Stanley. They're going to make some of those threes. Look at Miami missing those threes. You know, take a look right here. Look at his tough stretch right there. Wow. I mean, are you kidding me? That's really a tough. That Florida State game, they were up nine with about four minutes to yeah. go. That's now nine straight shots that the Hurricanes have missed. And Jack White reigns in another three. His first three ball of the night. Well, from out of Australia, we say we're sure. Best of the people out there with all those fires. Australia Open going on in tennis. They stroke it to three, baby, and the Cameron Crazies love it, Reese. They love it just like they loved you when you walked in. They said, that's Reese Davis. <laughs> the Blue Devils have hit five of nine from three. We'll show you who's playing big coming up.
You know, new customers save over $1,000 on average when they bundle home and auto with Progressive. Wow. That's and now, the Progressive Commercial Halftime Show. Everything he did, and they couldn't wait to see him in the NBA, and the wait is over tomorrow night. As Zion makes his long-awaited debut for the much-improved Pelicans against the Spurs, 9.30 Eastern, 76ers and Raptors to get it started. Both games on ESPN and the app, so you can watch them. Uh, you know, he's, he's had to deal with the knee injuries. They've tried to work with him physically to try to take some of that stress off his body. But man, oh man, when he played in the preseason, he was terrific. I mean, star, <laughs> he'll be a star right out of the gate. There's no doubt about it. He's so physical. He's so quick, so agile. Hey, that's Duke too, by the way. You got J.J. Redick. Unbelievable. I just likes to the locker room. Yeah, he's had a he's had a groin issue, boy. I mean, he was a warrior Saturday against Florida State. It was an obvious pain. He was going through some work with the trainers today during their shoot around in practice, and he's trying to give it a go. And he's coming back out to the bench right now. Let's see if he can go as Duke keeps Randy making three. And now it's Joey Baker. He can shoot it. That's Joey Baker's forte. Shoot the three, baby. But the bottom line is it becomes contagious. Hurt started it off, knocking down two. Everybody else squaring their body, shooting very relaxed, no tension, up big. Everly lets one fly way too long. Carries back in the game, and he has a rebound. You know how much Zion coming back tomorrow. You look at that team, the Pelicans. You got Duke all over the place. Yeah. Redick and Altu has become a star. Brandon, Brandon Ingram. Ingram has been a star. He got 49 the other day. Carey blew the layup. Hurt in there working. He had a couple of threes early and then showing that toughness that Coach K has been looking for that he anticipates will develop as Matthew continues to mature as a player. Beverly kicks it out. McGusty, who's been dealing with a bulky back, knocks in the three for Miami. He's there. Second leading scorer really likes Vasilovich and Mugusti all right in the same range. And Every shoot the three. 14. He's from the transfer out of Oklahoma, Mugusti. Oklahoma gave a good fight yesterday against Baylor. The Baylor number one now. Can't wait to see them Saturday against the Gators. You've got that game, don't yeah, you? Yeah, Saturday. Bobby Rashus and I will be down there with his buddy. Ray Jones with the pull up, rattles out. Freshman Anthony Walker got the rebound and got hit in the kisser for his effort. You know, Jimmy Laranega does a great job. I don't care what anybody tells me right now when I look at this team. This team's got some wins. They beat Illinois at Illinois. They beat Clemson. They beat Temple. They beat Pittsburgh. I mean, those are some quality wins. He has a big kid, as we talked about earlier, who they've lost. He had a meniscus surgery, came into the program with an ACL problem out of Florida. Keith, Keith Stone. Stone. And they were 5-1 and one in the six games he played. They think he's going to come back in about another week. They're hopeful that he'll be able to. They did lose Dane Gack for the season. There's a sophomore from Australia who'd been playing well. He had a meniscus issue. You see the Canes got off to a good start, winning nine of their first 12. I mentioned three guys who are pretty much doing the scoring, but interior defense particularly has been a problem for them. That's not a good matchup when you have to deal with Vernon Carey. But when you look at their schedule, Dick, in the ACC, this is their eighth ACC game. It's their second game against Duke. They've played Louisville twice. They've played Florida State. Uh, they played Pittsburgh, which is a, a solid team, NC State and Clemson. Uh, they lost to NC State, but they did something that Duke was unable to do. They won at Clemson. Right, they did win at Clemson. And the one thing, let's face reality, the ACC is not vintage ACC from top to bottom that has been in the past. There's no way, shape, or form. So you can steal a couple of wins here and there. I thought North Carolina State getting a big win yesterday, beating Virginia at Virginia. Goldwire just picks McGusty's pocket and then dribbles by him. Hurt. And he got fouled on his way to the basket. Hurt's got to get more weight on his body, become a little more physical. He's an all-time leading scorer in the state of Minnesota. His brother, by the way, plays for Minnesota. I'm sure Richard Bettina would have loved to have him say yes to him. But I think he's going to be a star. I really do. I think, first of all, he's not a one-and-done player. But I think once he fills that body out, he's got a gift that, to me, is special. When you can make shots. You can make shots. You know, a lot of guys are great athletes, but they can't make shots. Well, he can make shots. Deloria and Cassius Stanley returning. Vernon Carey and Trey Jones will get a break for the Blue Devils. You won't see quite as much substituting for the Hurricanes. They simply just don't have that kind of bodies, a number of bodies. Isaiah Wong is in for the Canes right now. You know, on the subject of Hurt, Dick, he's had a couple of games 
over the course of the season. Georgetown. Georgetown was one. Clemson last week was another. And I asked Mike before the game about the ways responded. Matthew had a good offensive game against Louisville on Saturday night, and he also followed up the Georgetown game well. He's learning what it takes to produce at a high level at, at this level of basketball right now. It just takes, you know, people, what, the guys they had last year that came in ready-made, that's rare, you know? Yeah, Barrett, Zion. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, people, this kid is going to be a player. He knows how to score. Got over 3,000 points in high school. Spots the opening, goes to the goal, slides, glides, good finger roll. And he can show, you're right, he talked to us about the experience factor of being in these kind of physical games like they were with Louisville. And they haven't had enough of that. And he thinks they can learn from that. So he said, you know, losing, we lost two games. Everybody's making like it's a panic state. And he's right, they're 15 and three. And they're only a couple of baskets away from being 18 and 0. And Chris Likes has returned for Miami. But you know what? I understand that. But people are going to react that way because of the empire that they built as Hurt takes a break Absolutely. with 11 points. I think that's a good problem to have when Absolutely. people panic when you lose a couple of games, you know? Expectations, man. Expectations means, are big. Means you set the bar pretty high. Well, you wear that pinstripe uniform of the Yankees. Congratulations, Derek Jeter. Hall of Famer. How could somebody not vote for him? How could that guy logically not vote? 3,400 hits. I, I do not do not know long although there are some guys who are very stubborn about their definition of first ballot hall of famer stanley can fly sort of lost the handle on the way up thought we were about to get a highlight reel dunk mcgusty to miller he has his shot blocked by delorier delorier getting a little physical presence on the inside a veteran player complimentary player he guys like o'connell and goldwire they're really good solid complimentary players Long having all kind of trouble with Joey Baker, but he shakes him and Goldwire fouled him from behind. There's a couple of factors involved here in Miami. You're playing this team with a chip on their shoulder, losing two straight games. There's the block on the inside. And first foul on Goldwire. But well, what did I tell Coach K when we left? I said, you know, Coach, it amazes me. I said, you sit here like a guy trying to prove yourself. Has anybody told you you got over 1,000 wins, that you won a number of national championships, you won Olympic gold medals? He said, really? He can care less about all that tonight. <laughs> he cared about one thing he said. I want to win tonight. Wants, wants to get to 1148. 1147. You said over 1,000, which is true, but you shorted him 147. <laughs> I would just like to have the 147. <laughs> <laughs> Alex O'Connell in for the Blue Devils. Another sharpshooter. Alex turns it over. Long, the freshman from New Jersey, makes a good play. But then uh, Cassius Stanley fouled him. Stanley came out of Sierra Canyon High School. They got two great players there. Paul B. and Cardi did a great job during that. High school tournament. Kid named Boston and kid named Zaire Williams. Same. Oh, there's the contact, no doubt about it. Body contact. You're to be saluted for the fantastic work that you've done helping raise money for the V Foundation and the Coaches versus Cancer also this week, where you'll see a lot of the suits and sneakers with the coaches across the country. Winston has the shot rattle out but it's been a it's been something that the entire basketball community has rallied behind and done a, done a lot of great work to try to fight that and the, the emotional stories that you have shared i think have really inspired a lot of people to be as generous as they possibly can be well thank you i think the coaches versus cancer do a great job as well as the deep foundation absolutely the defense again from duke and her probably should have just grabbed the basketball but duke's going to come out of there with it Jordan Goldwire has returned for the Blue Devils. Good post feed from Stanley. And Rodney Miller is going to be called by Ted Valentine for giving Big Vern a little push. That's the first foul on Miller. Miller has to stay out of foul trouble. Miami doesn't have any appreciable size other than him. They got three out of six players to play in the front court. Oh! 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 Up, up and away. You're talking about an athlete. 
You talk about a high rise. Huh? He's the elevator man. My guy Reese can jump like that. They told me in Tremurals, not in Alabama, you jump like that. Somebody lied to you. <laughs> but in a related story, Zion Williams is going to make his NBA debut tomorrow night. Stanley broke his vertical leap record here at Oh, What an athlete. You can't teach what he possesses. You can work with him all over the parts of the game and learn how to play. He's a typical, what I call, Mr. Potential. And as Brooks said so well, he wants to be a player. It's a player's a player's a player's a player's a player's oh, man. Whew. Players to play in the front court. Oh, oh boy. Wow. Boy. Is he soaring? An exciting player. Just put up 24 against Louisville on Saturday night. And Stanley so far tonight with five. But the last two of the emphatic and exhilarating variety, Vasilovic. Vasilovic can shoot the basketball. He's from Australia as well. Nice Good. gesture, Dan Schumann and uh, Jay Billis, and uh, raising some money for them down there for those fires. Well, as it, that's because of what DJ is doing. DJ of Serbian descent, but from Australia. That's his home. He's donating $5 for every three pointer he made this year, and several in the ESPN family have pledged to Master as well. Hurt knocks down his third three of the night. He's got 15. I tell you, I think he's going to be a star. I really do. I believe that once he gets physically stronger, he gets tougher. He understands how to compete in terms of the physical part of the game. He's got that stroke, Reese, and that's special. A 19-point lead for the Blue Devils. The last two times Miami has played Duke as Miller scores. Blue Devils have won by 30 or more. And that's coming on the heels of a run in which the Hurricanes had as much success as just about anyone not named North Carolina had had against Duke. I'll tell you, think about this. That Florida State team, one of the most impressive teams I've played this year. They're on fire. They're all on fire. The shooting that zone out. Ray Jones knocks down his second three of the night. It's a 20-point lead. They're trying a little bit of everything. They can't match up with him inside. Zone worked a couple times, and this time they just shot over. Oh, the star is hurt. The star is trying to play, but the kid is hurt. He doesn't have the burst of speed. You know, I say they played Florida State about 72 hours ago. Played them where they're beating him by nine, and that's an aggressive, attacking, physical Florida State team. They had him on the ropes, Miami. Feel bad for him. I don't want to see anybody embarrassed. I remember the day you asked, what now, Dad? So I said, find a job, any job, work hard. That's just how it is. But of course, you didn't listen. You showed me there's another way. I'm proud of you. Saturday, three of the best Big 12 SEC Challenge games on ESPN and the app. Kansas and Tennessee. It's where college game day is going to be at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. In a few minutes, you're going to see a wild melee that Dick and I haven't seen yet at the end of the Kansas-Kansas State game. Could impact who's available for that one. Kentucky and Texas Tech at 6 Eastern. And then it'll be number one Baylor on the road to take on the Gators. Dick, you're going to... I don't know. Have you had a chance to see Baylor in person yet this year? No, not, not, not in person. I've seen him on the two. Where do you see in person that's Freddie Gillespie? Yeah, I saw him what last a, night. What a, I, I was watching that game last night as I was traveling here. What a tremendous story. Started his career at Division Three, Just become a terrific center for Scott Drew's team. That's a good-looking club as Carey goes around Miller, and Miller fouls him. Three-point you know, play opportunity. You mentioned Gillespie. He's one of the five best defensive players as well. He can rebound. Very tenacious. Watch his post move inside. There's a little fake. Now drop step. Great drop step. UB Brown would love that. He's to teach that big time at the five star. Vernon Carey broke the heart of Jim. Jimmy Laranega. Let me tell you this about Jim Laranega. What hurt them is they had commitments from two big time players. And then they changed their commitment. Losing Bay. And then the kids at Villanova doing really well. And the kid Walker who's with Oregon. Laranega has some guys coming in 
next year. They think they're going to be a lot better next year. They have a transfer from Cincinnati that's sitting out this year. This year, Brooks. So that will give him another big body. His likes continues his throw. You can tell he's just not getting the same lift. He's 0 for 5. He's now 8 for his last 48 wow. against Duke. Baker. Wardenburg with the rebound. Wardenburg had a solid performance against the Blue Devils in their meeting in Coral Gables. He drew the praise from Coach K after that game. And Roger Ayers catches Cam McGusty for stepping out of bounds. What about big Cassius Stanley? Yeah, it's ca lot. unbelievable, Cassius Stanley. You talk about a high riser. You talk about up. Look at this. Up, up, and away, baby. He comes right down the lane. Dunkaroo, dipsy do, Dunkaroo. Come on. This is Fonz in the closing seconds of a blowout between K State and Kansas. Yeah, it shouldn't have ever happened. It's a block out of our game. Should be some severe suspensions. Reprehensible. And I think that the university and the institution takes oh, swift that action. Function. I expect severe and long term discipline. Reese, back to you. All right, guys, we'll look forward to seeing how that unfolded, regrettably. Uh, the end of that. I know it's a bitter rivalry, but no place man, for man, there's no place for that in the sport. Play basketball, play hard, play fear. Nice fake. Nice fake. Gavin Delorier scores for the Blue Devils. Blue Devils have done a lot of damage from behind the three-point arc. Tonight, five different guys have hit a triple or eight of 14, and now Delorier has a chance to get three. As, uh, as they like to say, the old-fashioned way. You know, he's one of those guys that contributes off the bench, gives him some strong minutes. He's a good complimentary player. There's first points, and after going scoreless in the last two games, Dick, and he yep. finishes off the three-point play, and the Blue Devils are up huge. Jimmy Laredate is such a proud guy. He's a great player of Providence. And Chris Likes still can't find the bucket. Miami's leading scorers had a tough night playing on an injured game, and there's another three. Joey wow. Baker knocks it in, wow. sixth of the night, or rather ninth of the night. You know, it's, a little, e it's a little easier to shoot the ball, Reese. I'm sorry, a little easier to shoot the ball when you got no pressure on you right now. You're up 45-16. Anthony Walker follows up. Another one of those young players that Larry Nagas hoping develops physically that they have high hopes for Brooke Joey Baker's had a had a good night so far tonight yes he has and it was interesting to watch him take shots in the pregame uh, one of the assistant coaches Chris Carrollwell was telling him to stay patient and just wait till the ball goes through the net before he's demanding the next shot you kind of watch right here you see him play patient wait nice rotation on that ball and you can just tell the difference when he gets his feet set and he really works through the follow through in that shot to get that nice follow through and just play more patient. A broke on the season he's making 42 percent from behind the arc but he's you know he's a the guy they burned his red shirt last year late when they had some injury problems and didn't get a lot of playing time the rest of the way but he's a guy who can who can give them a good lift another good shooter this is a, a much better three-point shooting team than the Blue Devils had had last year now I'm, you know right. in all other areas last year was, was really special but uh they got some shooters on this club and baker's one of them more good defense from duke goldwire white jones stanley with the offensive window and wardenberg will pull it away for the canes They've improved shooting the three, but having a guy like Baker doesn't hurt. But you can bring a guy in against his zone, maybe play against Syracuse. Syracuse, by the way, is playing a lot better right now. The kid Hughes has been terrific with Jim Beheim's team. It's now a half dozen turnovers for Miami. You see what Duke has done the last couple of games in those two losses. Didn't shoot it great from behind the arc tonight. They've made better than 50%, and unless Miami gets busy, they're going to have their lowest scoring half of the season previously. Oh, the score was 25, Jack White. They're all contributing, man. They're all contributing. This Miami team really, I think, took a physical thing. Not only lost the game Saturday, but physically they took a beating in terms of guys. They couldn't practice. They couldn't, Jimmy told me they couldn't practice Sunday. We're all in the trainer's room. You had to work on it. It's tough. And then you got to come here and face this team that's going to play with a little chip on their shoulder because they lost two in a row. 
Augusti who just scored Laranega said watching him walk around the last couple of days with a back spasm he didn't think there was any way he could play Jim got a, a massage therapist to come in and work him they got him loosened up a little bit he's continued to get treatment and when he was in practice this morning Laranega said it was easily the best he'd looked in a while in terms of being able to move around Tell you what Jim Laranega did it George Mason was unbelievable I mean that, that unbelievable dramatic run can you can you believe what is that? 14 years ago 2006 I know time has really flown it's not that, incredible Tell back when you it. and I were young men, <laughs> young men. what have I been young <laughs> I like to know when I was young I can't feel it man oh wow young at heart though young at heart Jack White returns to put it very bluntly, we are a total m, &M in yeah. this match. I yeah. mean, it's simple as can be. We cannot fool you. It's a mismatch. But we're going to have some stories for you after this half, so you better tell your friends to stay tuned, because we're going to talk some stuff, man. I've got it ready to roll, Reese. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't, why don't you look at your Twitter feed at halftime and go into Vital's Twitter feed right now and, and right, ask, ask Uncle Dickie to tell you a story. Yeah. Tell me a story about fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Right. Wow. Some of them could even be basketball related. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Illinois right now? Just beat the oh. heck out of Purdue. At Purdue, the kid Cookburn has been Cook terrific. Yeah. Oh, man, he's been terrific. 20, I think 22 and 16 rebounds. Yeah, I'm going to see them in a couple of weeks against Michigan State. Looking forward to that. Uh, the Blue Devils, uh, you've talked about Matthew Hurd and an emerging star. He has been terrific in the first half. Duke has really played inside out well. Carey giving it up to Jones. Jones a couple of threes. They've hit nine of them here in the first half. Jones' brother's also on that Pelicans team. You think of J.J. Reddick, Jones, Ingram, Zion. I mean, that's unbelievable. That's Duke 2. They'll be on Wednesday night. Make sure you watch. You'll see Zion, baby. Zion Mania is going to hit the unbelievable New Orleans. It's been uh, quite a run in New Orleans. Saints notwithstanding, but LSU winning the national championship in football in New Orleans. And now Zion used to make his debut. What about LSU tonight winning by two? They're by undefeated. Two Florida. They're undefeated in the, right now, the SEC. They've won some close games. They pulled out one against Arkansas, and they pulled out one today against the Gators. You know, that was a calling card for the... LSU team last year too, being able to sometimes squandering leads, but then being able to find a way to finish games. They got a good backcourt there, Mays, and certainly in smart. Carry the rebound, he's fouled, and under 14 seconds to play here in what has been a complete domination in the first half by the Blue Devils, and right Carey will the go game. to the line. It's been a domination since the layup drill. Augusti was called for that foul. It's his first. Carey this has five tonight as Duke has done a lot of its damage from outside and a lot of different guys have contributed eight different players have scored seven guys have a rebound four have an assist that falls right in line with what happened in Coral Gables every Blue Devil that played 11 of them in Coral Gables had at least three points and a rebound I'll tell you one thing though we mentioned George Mason he led that Cinderella run in 2006 I mean they lost their eventual champ the Gators but they beat Michigan State they beat North Carolina and wrote to the final four what a dramatic story that was he also led miami to the sweet 16 in 2013 to 16. he had 13 straight winning seasons at george mason the guy could go he's got over 600 career wins i feel for him i know how much the game means to him i know how much he loves working with young people and teaching and i know right now it's going to hurt big time to be down 26 at the half and fouling duke with fouls to give uh, uh, right now you have to imagine doing something like this at this juncture with this kind of lead is basically this is like a live practice you know they're working on situations up by 26. you know we talk about coach k it's expectations expectations but i'm going to tell you this reason a lot of people could disagree with me and I, I, that's their prerogative if i had to pick the mount rushmore's of active coaches now of any sport he'd be one of my four absolutely you know belichick in there right yeah. belichick hit a uh, saban, saban. And who would be the fourth? We'll debate that and we'll talk debate about the that in the second half. Those three are locks to me. That could be one of the things. Those Fewest three are locks. points in any half this season for Miami. Duke has the Canes doubled up 48-24. You can stay tuned for the Jeep halftime report. Time now to go to the studio. Kevin, Seth, and LaFonso. Guys? I'd like to see that.
All right, Reese, thanks so much. Domination by Duke through 20 minutes of basketball. They've dropped their last two games and appear to be well on their way to riding the ship. Reese Davis, Dick Vitale, Brooke Weisbrook with us on the sideline. So really impressive first half for the Blue Devils, particularly shooting the ball. They were 9 of 16 from behind the yard. Well, they did a great job shooting the ball, and it really started with Matt Hurt. Matthew Hurt knocked down a couple of threes to start the game. He's got that beautiful rotation that struck. I'll tell you one thing, all-time leading scorer in the history of high school basketball in Minnesota. There he is. He's got to get stronger physically. And he really is an active player. Had a great first half. Had a ter terrific first half. Watch his drive down the lane. Tremendous. He's going to be a star. I don't have any doubt in my mind, but she's not a one-and-done player. And he's going to get stronger physically. And I think the upside for that young guy is special. Duke had eight guys score in the first half. Hurt was the only guy in the game in double figures. What the Blue Devils have done from the arc tonight. Hurt has been really good, and Chris Likes, who's the sixth leading scorer in the ACC and the Hurricanes' leading scorer, dealing with a groin injury. He is 0 for 7 from the floor. He, look, the injury has certainly hampered Miami's leading scorer, but Likes is a guy who, in his career, has had trouble with the Blue Devils. He is now 8 for 50 from the floor in his career. He was 2 for 15 in the first meeting between the two as Likes is called for the foul in the opening moment. You know, Reese, certain teams give you problems in terms of matchups. Duke is really, the matchup is almost impossible for them to deal with Miami. And I look right here at the kid Likes. To me, he's a winner by even trying to play. This kid basically hardly walked just they couldn't practice. And he's trying to gut it out. And for that, I commend him. And you told me earlier, so he's one tough kid. He, he's an explosive athlete, really, really good leader for them. And he's been a really effective player. Just the Blue Devils have been the thorn in his side, as they have been for many players over the years. You know, Trey Jones has been tough on him. Because Trey Jones is one of the premier defensive players in the game. Well, that's what Laranaga said today. That Jones has been the toughest guy. A great save by Carey for Lights to find any space against and then they have goal wire to spell him if they have to carry gets really deep position and Miami's fortunate that's not an and one you know one thing you do if you're Jimmy Larry people say what would you do in a situation like this you play it in segments you tell your kids everybody play five minutes give me five good minutes and let's see what we can do in those five minutes because you really right now the scoreboard tells you that we got a mismatch here a total mismatch a freshman Walker who gives up about 65 to 70 pounds to Big Vernon Carey, a fellow freshman, picked up his second foul. You know, he's charted right now by our people to be a draft choice about 20 in the draft, about 20 in the first round. What do you think of it? You know, I, I think that's it. I think basically you're looking at a scenario where he's a late first round, maybe with a little bit more work, get up to about 16, 17, but he's in the first round pick. I think he'll go. No, I really believe he's the one guy in the team that will lose. Well, he, he's got he's got really good skill. He can shoot the ball from the front for a little bit. Likes his shot blocked by Hurt. He, he hasn't been great at the free throw line, but he's got a nice touch. He's a skilled big guy, too. He's not an above the rim guy. Right. Uh, but he he's, you see what he's done. He leads the ACC in field goal percentage among the national leaders, among those who've taken at least 190 shots. Scores, he blocks some shots, he gets on the boards, and he blocks shots right on cue, though he's called yeah, for the I mean, foul. I mean, he's a good player, there's no question. Another year of college, I mean, it'd be even a lot better, a little more trimmed down, a little quicker. But you know, you talk about players of the year, let's look right now at the ACC, player of the year. Now, remember, there's 20 games to, you got to play, right now they played seven. But I mean, he's got to be an early guy up there in the conversation. Jordan Warren has got to be up there. And I'm going to tell you a kid, not getting a lot of publicity, but he's really coming on. Syracuse, the kid use. He's playing terrific ball for Jimmy Beheim's team. And so, so is Jim yeah, Sun. Buddy, buddy is the, the player ball. of the week in he's the ACC. Smoking. Well, you know, he's done a little better than his dad when he played. You know, between <laughs> he and Dave Bing, that was one great backcourt. They averaged between them about 37 a game. Yeah. Bing got about 29, and Jim got about six. <laughs> I'm only teasing you, Jimmy B, so I know you can play. Well, your math is awful, but that yeah. would give Jim eight. Yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> hey, I was never a road scholar. <laughs> no, I, I knew it was that. I was just uh, to see you were saying if I, You said if I checked out on you here with the big lead for the Blue Devils, it's hurt. Now gets his 17 point, his second drive of the night. Sam Wardenberg. 
He drew the braces of Coach K after the first game. He liked his physicality, his toughness. Well, Sam's another guy who's been playing hurt. He's been dealing with a uh, with knee injury. And, and the Gusty's had the back issue and fires up the air ball. And it's a 28-point deficit for the Hurricanes. Since we got this unbelievable situation score-wise, I'm going to tell you a conference that's underrated. The A-10. You look at the A-10. Dayton is, a, we know, is legit. There's no doubt about Dayton being legit. But they've got teams in the air like VCU, Duquesne. You've got teams like Rhode Island. I mean, Richmond. Those teams are all in the hunt for March Madness bids. I'm telling you. And there's going to be some winning that goes on. Finally stroke one. But I'm happy for making that likes. But you got some teams in the ACC that have to start winning games because really it's not a vintage ACC. We got a bunch of clubs, four and four, four and three. That's why the NC State win was a big win over Virginia. Likes has now hit two in a row and he wow. knocks down the three. He heard us. He heard us talk about his numbers against Duke. Let's give me some room, baby. I can make shots. He hit so many huge shots after they'd squandered that lead against Florida State Saturday to try to give the Hurricanes a chance to win. Vasilovich, it's a hand on it, but it'll stay on this end with the Blue Devils. One thing about Jimmy Laranega, his kids will not quit. Because Jimmy was, he played for Joe Mullaney, and he played two years for Dave Gavitt, two outstanding coaches. And Jimmy was a fierce, fierce competitor when he played. You go back to you were talking about the A-10, and previously you'd mentioned Player of the Year in the ACC, but National Player of the Year could come from Dayton as well, and Obi Toppin. Yeah, he's having a heck of a year, no question. Having a heck of a year. I think when you talk National Player of the Year, my choice today would I go to my alma mater, Seton Hall, even though they don't claim me, Miles Powell, he's been sensational. And he has, Seton Hall has had a big week or so and pass a little too long as Jones was trying to hit Hurt. See Trey right now having he went right by him. He went right by him trying to keep up with him. He said, come on, anywhere else back? I like they spin, spun back. Trey Jones really did a good job. You know, we talked about the Pelicans Duke too. Got to throw in his brothers there as well. His brother Redick, Ingram, Zion. And Zion making his debut tomorrow night against the Spurs on ESPN at 9:30. There goes lights again. Chris can't get this one to go. Now Jones had a little bit of a rough night defensively. Everybody did trying to deal with Louisville's David Johnson. David Johnson put a show on. He put a show on. And he banged up his shoulder. You know, David missed a lot of time in the off season. With a surgically yep. repaired shoulder. He banged it up close to the end of that Duke game. I'm told he hasn't had contact in practice yet, but they are expecting him not to miss any time. So that's certainly good news. He had surgery to repair a torn labor, and that's a four to six month recovery. And he missed a lot of time in the offseason early on, but he's starting to emerge as a star for the Cardinals, who, along with Florida State, lead the ACC. You know, he's going to be a special player. And what I learned that was maybe several months ago from Ryan McMahon who lives in Sarasota where I live and he told me so we got a freshman David Johnson who's going to be special Trey Jones on the pull up offensive rebound to Laurier Gloria working on the glass just playing hard that's all you want your kids to do is now play hard it's important certainly for Miami to keep playing hard as you said but Duke also has a week off after tonight so after losing two in a row losing a home game against Louisville how Duke finishes this game over the last 1509 will be important to coach K for fans of college basketball for fans of big time contenders this is not a final exam this is a midterm and Trey Jones certainly both Mid-season top 25 candidates for the Blue Devils. Carey with eight points. Jones in double figures tonight with 10. Trey also with five assists in what has been a thorough spanking of the Hurricanes. Vasilovich knocks down the three to beat the shot clock. Well, that's his strength to be able to shoot the three, Vasilovich. A couple of years ago, he led the ACC in three-point percentage. Didn't have a great year last year from a percentage standpoint. I think DJ's gotten himself in much better condition this year. He's had to. They, he and he and Lights who gets to steal and McGusty are playing better than 40 minutes a game and or around 40 minutes a game. And last week or last Saturday against Florida State had to go into the extra period more than 40 minutes. I'm gonna let you be a coach for a moment. When All do right. you reach the point? Reach the point with a kid like Lights who's battling an injury. 
you look at the scoreboard and you say, you know what? I, I got to think about our future. This game looks like, you know, it's been tough for us to come back and win. And do we take them out and rest them? Some time to be reasonable and digest this if you can. But my immediate instinct, is, I totally agree with you, Dick. I, I think the Sosa needs to be gone uh, for the rest of the Absolutely. season. They can stay with the stay with the program and they can mentor him and take care of him. But he, you know, some actions rise to the level that you forfeit the privilege of play. And Absolutely, I think, I think that chair. was it. Picking yeah. up a chair, it's criminal. It's really a, a sad case. It's really sad for basketball. And I really have a problem with the way that bench exploded as well. I think that you've got to have assistant coaches on that sideline to keep their players on the sideline. And I don't want to hear the excuse. I know I've seen some people on Twitter put up about the fact, well, I shouldn't have stole the ball, etc. Give me a break. There's no excuse for what transpired after stealing the ball. I mean, you could see he went up to block the shot, he fouled him, and then he ran over, stared at him, and got I'm just created a nightmare. A nightmare for Kansas basketball. Kansas fans care about basketball. Bill Self cares about basketball. Those people give a damn. They've had a great, great program. They don't need that kind of nonsense in their program. And, you know, I didn't think that David McCormick from the video that we saw put himself very well. Number 33 was yep. in the middle of it rather than trying to tamp it down. He became involved. But it, it's going to be interesting to see how many suspensions come, there, and there will be, but how many of them how long they are, and what kind of impact this has long term. And if you are marking your calendars, the return match is on February 29th in Manhattan. So one thing, the Big 12 office, they got to come down heavy and hard. There can't be no lightweight move there at all. I was consulting the rule book during halftime after that about the protocol for reporting the fights, and it will go to the conference administrators, the athletic directors will be involved, and you know, such a, a black eye for frankly Kansas program that already is dealing with some off the court issues and then to have something which is semi on the court I guess we want to call it given another uh, just another obstacle for the Jayhawks program which as you mentioned is a is a proud one and you know, the NCAA situation and now with uh, with this dealing with this been a uh, let the kid make Tough the layup. Go. Let the kid make the layup in that situation and go to the locker room. Enjoy the, the moment. It yeah. won the game. It won the game. He's like, look. Hey, look, I look, there are some coaches that and, and maybe maybe Bruce Weber's one of them, but there are some coaches who would say you concede. They're letting you know they're dribbling it out. It's over. Mm -hmm. But the clock's running. You play the game you want the way you want to play, and you play it the right way until, until 40, it's minutes. The end. Yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's like the old question about running up the score at the end of games. You don't like it, stop it. <laughs> you don't have to stop it in a, in an egregious manner that way as Joey Baker knocks down another three. He's got nine tonight. He looks very comfortable shooting the ball. You can see that he really loves that part of the game. Three or four from behind the arc. This Duke team has some weapons back there. But you know, look. Miami's not a good defensive team. Larry Nagel will tell you that. It's been a struggle for them all season. We've mentioned a couple of times their interior defense, but really their, their overall defense hasn't, hasn't been very good. You know the thing right here? They're only down three and a half. You play, forget the first half and keep the score. Miami's on television, the Australian Open. Chris Fowler and the guys do a tremendous job with that. You see Coco Goff still a couple months shy of her 16th birthday and get a driver's license. I think she'll be able to afford a car. Took care, took care of Venus in the first round, and now a little bit of a scuffle in the early going. The Australian Open going on over on ESPN2 as Vernon Carey will go to the free throw line and shoot a couple with Duke up by 25. Saturday, Big 12 SEC Challenge on ESPN and the ESPN app. Tennessee and Kansas, 4 o'clock Eastern Time. College game day will be there. The festivities or melee in Lawrence tonight, adding to the Intrigue of the Tennessee Kansas game at 4 o'clock Eastern Time Kentucky and Texas Tech and then Baylor against Florida Dick You'll be there to see the number one team in the country taking on the Gators Yeah, Bob with shoes on an eye and Chris Budden looking forward to that the Gators are really a very formidable team I think it's gonna be a tough game there for Baylor I know they come in number one, but the Gators have a little chip on there. She lost a heartbreaker today to LSU Take a look at Baylor right there eight 15 straight wins. You know what's really amazing? 
He has done an incredible job. Yet they've been critics about him in terms of can he coach. That's ridiculous and absurd. What he's done for that program from where it was when he started is amazing. And I agree with Fran Fischel what he said last night about the fact what he's done this year. I mean, he's got to be right up there as coach of the year in terms of the conversation without a doubt. Uh, at this point in the season, right around the halfway point, maybe slightly past it, I would say he is certainly one of the leaders uh, for Coach of the Year. Scott Drew's done a sensational job. They've had a lot of success in the Big 12 SEC Challenge, and it'll be, it'll be a, a steep hill against the Gators who really haven't played to the level that many expected in the preseason. Well, preseason, everybody's talking about Final Four. They got Black Shear. Uh, they got the kid now Payne who's giving them some good minutes. And then Hart can play at the point. I like Mike White. But they really, they've had moments where they're really good and they've had some inconsistency. But today is, a, is not a bad loss. I mean, you lose by two on a road to LSU, who's very good. Right. I mean, LSU's got, you know, a kid inside. Watford, the freshman, is terrific. So the backcourt, I love their backcourt. Skyler is, is incredible. Mays and Javante Smart. But, you know, you said earlier, uh, Chris Fowler doing a great job in tennis, and I agree, because Chris is terrific. All of you guys, and I told you this, the job you did in football was unbelievable. What you did, I sent you a text right after you did it. Mm -hmm. The way you handled that whole situation, that's not easy to do. People think it's easy. And giving a championship trophy out, you're up there, and you handle it in professional style like I know everything you did. Very, very kind. I, I appreciate oh, I, that. You know, I, uh, I promised the people as we watch Miami working deep in the clock, Sam Wardenberg, fouled on his way to the bucket. I promised the people in the first half when, honestly, and you and I, we try to be honest with people. <laughs> this thing's out of hand, right? right? I promised them that you'd tell a story. <laughs> tell me a story. What is your favorite story about doing a game in this building, Cameron Indoor? Wow, my favorite story of doing a game here. Cable yeah. shot? Cable. That, that's, you, that, thank you. That's one of them. That was a magical moment because many people thought that would be blowout city. That was a team that was struggling. When I hit my head, I jumped up when he when he made that unbelievable shot. I hit my head. Blood is coming down. Mike Patrick is next to me. And I didn't care about blood. I didn't want the game to end, man. I wanted to go on and on and on. I, but, I don't... I mean, it's a unique place from which to broadcast. I actually, a lot of our colleagues get very upset about this, just to be honest. I don't really mind it. It's a, it's a unique view. You can really see the yeah. action unfold. But I don't know. There's something called a snoop cam that's right in front of us. That might be a better vantage point, that camera there. <laughs> there there's the railing. If you, I don't know if you can see my hand hitting it up there. It, they've got padding on it now, probably there's because no you, padding split, you split that dome oh, open. Oh, right split there. that dome, the VBDI. <laughs> it was split open, but I didn't care. It was yeah. such a magical moment here. And eventually, Stackhouse and company. That was a terrific North Carolina team. Hey, I want to mention North Carolina. I know a lot of people say, what's happened, North Carolina? We're very simple. As another deuce inside. But let me say this. This is not a vintage North Carolina team talent-wise. Roy Williams was not just throwing smoke when he said, we're just not that gifted. He was telling a fact, especially when Cole Anthony went out. My situation, I'm telling you now, they will be back. Back bigger than ever. Next year, they got one of the top three classes. as another basket there for her in recruiting. You look at the recruits they got, it's unbelievable coming in. Same blue bloods, Kentucky, Duke, Carolina. Kentucky, Duke, and Carolina are three rated number one, two, and three recruited, followed by Tennessee's four, five Michigan, and six Arkansas. Eric Musselman doing a great job down there with the Razorbacks. So they'll be back. You know, what about Cole Anthony? Will he play? I think there's no doubt about the fact that you got to let the medical team make that call. They're going to be involved. And then the youngster, how badly does he want to play? And is he able to play? So your your dream just came true. They killed my mic. They killed your mic? No, no, so oh, you get to what? do the game by oh, yourself. No, 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 no. I want you, baby. I need you. <laughs> I need you. You're my crutch, man. I need you. Don't leave me. Uh, hey, you know, some things in basketball are interesting. 
the Big East Conference and the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. So special this year, both those conferences. They've been dynamite. In the Big Ten, people are winning at home. That's why that Illinois win today, blowing out, blowing out Purdue, was a major, major win for Illinois. Coach Underwood doing a heck of a job. Now Brad, Ember, Brad Underwood has done a terrific job. Top 25 teams, you see five of them coming from the Big Ten. Three of them from the Big East. You probably make a case for a couple others from the Big East as well. That Big Ten, read an article today, Dick, that across college basketball, the home court advantage in terms of percentage of wins has been declining a little bit and has declined right. this year. That is not the case in the Big Ten. Memory serves, I think it's 85% yep. going into the day. 85% of the home teams have won. So you get a road win. Well, as Illinois did, as you, as you pointed out, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's major. might be worth a little bit more. It's major. I remember a sequence when you look at the Big Ten, Michigan State, they go to Purdue and get really waxed. I, I think it was like 71 Yeah, they lost by 30. Yeah, and then you turn around, Purdue had just been beaten by Illinois like 61-37. So the home is a, a special place. I'm going to tell you, two kids that don't get a lot of recognition who can play. Two kids at Minnesota. The kid Carr and the kid Otoro. What a combination they are. As good as they are, my buddy Dick Weiss called me up. He was down to watch Rutgers play them on Sunday. He said Rutgers defense held both scoreless in the first half. Rutgers defense, what Steve Pikel's doing is tremendous. They haven't been in the tournament since 91. They're going to go dancing. And I'm telling you this, Penn State is going to go dancing. And I'm happy for Coach Chambers. So am I. Uh Pat Chambers done a really good job at Penn State. Steve Peichel, a Jim Calhoun disciple, instilling that toughness at Rutgers. I'm going to tell you, though, the best game I've seen this year, the most entertaining game, Friday night as Hurt knocks down another three. Friday night, Iowa and Michigan. Did you get a chance to see that? No, I didn't. Oh, Luca Garza was sensational. Yeah. I mean, he, he's played Michigan twice. He wishes he could play Michigan every game. He has 77 points in two games wow. against the Wolverines. At 33 at home in Iowa City. And Fran McCaffrey's got a good team that can really, really score a good offensive team. I'm going to see them. I got them against uh, Michigan. So I will see uh, uh, against Michigan State. Michigan I'm sorry, State, Michigan yeah. State. And I'm telling you, Garza, I can't wait to see him. His improvement from last year has been off the charts. Uh, he was making make shots. Likes goes to the line, shoot the one and one. And Chris has had another frustrating night, but he's certainly not in that boat alone among the Hurricanes. You know, this one year, I don't know, maybe we're going to start just a little sample. I think somebody wrote this. I, I know I read it somewhere. Now, maybe this year is a sample of what we're going to see when they rescind the one-and-done situation because, really, the one-and-done player has not been a major impact this year in college basketball like we've seen in the past. I mean, Anthony Edwards is supposed to be the number one pick to say right now in ESPN, and certainly he hasn't been the impact in terms of turning Georgia into a, a, a power. So again, it's veteran players, it's experienced players, and I like that. I like seeing that. Well, last year, Duke captivated the nation, but it was a veteran team that ended up winning a national championship, and really veteran teams that and made the final four. Not to say you can't do it with one and done, you certainly no. can, but it might be a little bit of a, a different year. Certainly topsy-turvy one this season. This is Miami's mascot because the Ibis is said to be the last creature to seek shelter from the storm. Well, the Ibis is in the storm house now because the storm has overcome the Hurricanes as Duke has a 30-point lead. It's Cam McGusty stepping to the line for Miami. And he, he despite him. being serenaded with air ball, air ball because of earlier, he makes two. Well, there's my Mount Rushmore as the college basketball race. Coach K obviously on there, Bobby Knight, Roy Williams, and Dean Smith. That's in my 40 years at ESPN. If you'd like to get an autograph copy with all my dollars going to the V Foundation, every dollar, just go to DickVitalOnline.com. Write down how you'd like me to autograph it. If you're a Duke fan, there's loads of Duke stuff in there with Christian Leitner. He's one of my four Mount Rushmore players. People may disagree with me, but he was terrific as a college player. Yeah, I don't think there's any, any reason to dispute that with Christian's career here at Duke with two national championships. 
winning shots, another appearance in the national championship game. You know, I figured out our fourth guy, but we talked about Mount Rushmore of active, active coaches, coaches all sports. Uh, well, active coaches in all sports today. You and I agreed on three. Nick Saban, Alabama. We agreed on Coach K. And we agreed on uh, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. The fourth one I've come up with, I don't know if you agree with me, Mr. Popovich. Number of NBA titles, it'd be, be tough to argue. I'm not sure that there's an active one in baseball. You know, maybe Joe Torre would have been if he if he were still active. Uh, hard to argue with Popovich for the fourth one. That's what about Rush. Now you go to Twitter, people, and tell me what you <laughs> think. Just go to at Race Davis or at Dickie V and just tell us what you think. Would you like for me? You said that I was your crutch. Would you like for me to help you out? Again, with from your Mount Rushmore of college basketball right. to remind the people 40 years at ESPN, which means that John Wooden right. did Thank not you. coach Thank during you. your time Thank at ESPN. You. And Larry Bird did play. Right. I, I get letters. How could you not pick Larry Bird? Are you kidding me? How could you not have John Wooden? It's my 40 years. He was before then. Oh, nice ball fake. Baker can't get the pull up to go. We've talked about just about everything under the sun. There's an interesting thing, and, and look, I know Miami's offense hasn't been good tonight, but one of the things that Jim Laranega did in the offseason is he wanted his team to improve their catch-and-shoot percentage. They worked on it, worked on it, worked on it in the offseason, play a few games, it's still the same as last year. So they dig into the analytics, and they realize that they're better shooting jumpers off the dribble. And in terms of points per possession, they lead the country in jumpers off the dribble. Now, Duke hasn't given them much of anything tonight. Well, it's an example that even a veteran coach like Laranega, relying on metrics, evolving, changing, as certainly as we've seen. And Coach K's got a lot of credit for doing that, but Jim's been able to do it and, and uh, continue to try to look for ways to make his team as successful as possible. Well, what he's going to look for is, number one, they got to upgrade their talent level. They really do. I mean, you competing now. He had some real good talent when he went to the Sweet 16. The talent level is not right there, but a lot of injuries have created that. And also, as we said earlier, they had verbal commitments out of the kid Walker at Oregon and the kid Bay at uh, Villanova. And it just didn't happen. Likes getting into the paint, dumps it to Rodney Miller. Miller's going to go to the free throw line, and, and Dick, while this game has gotten out of hand, a little statistical note has uh, uh, has not escaped our notice. Rodney Miller has put together his first career double double tonight. He gets to go to the free throw line for a couple more. He's played hard. Miller's played real hard, as all the kids have. They're just out man. You're out man. You're dealing with McDonald's High School All Americans. There's a reason in McDonald's High School All Americans. It's come out with some unbelievable talent. Brooke Rodney Miller's really worked to uh, improve his his uh, physical conditioning to improve as a player. Yes, he absolutely has. Actually, he's down 45 pounds. He redshirted last year and let him focus on improving himself while he lost that weight. And he said he battled his weight so much last season that trying to figure out the eating pattern was the most difficult part for him. He said, I had to stop eating late, and the hardest part was trying to find time just to eat three meals a day between working out, between going to class, uh, just trying to find that balance and time to eat regularly. And guys, he's really up for one of the most improved players in the ACC. And you look at it, he's trying to walk it off right now. But just having that energy down the stretch was the biggest difference for him. Well, he's got to have the energy like you, Brooke, when you play the coast of Carolina. They told me, <laughs> they told me you could handle the rock big time. Sure. I was a shooter, Dickie B, not a handler. I was not the PTP -er that you, know, you described. I think Brooke was a three, three sports. She lettered in three sports. Wow, that's an athlete. That's an athlete. Retire. I'm going to ask you something, Reese. Miami, speaking about Miami, football, I just signed, we got a quarterback coming in from uh, Houston. The Eric King. Is he a good one? He, he's excellent. Uh, he's a dual threat guy, he's an explosive guy who got a lot of attention during the season because four games into the season at Houston, Whose idea it was is still a little nebulous, whether it was D'Eric's idea or Dana Holgerson, the head coach's idea, but they, they pulled out some of the guys D'Eric was playing and, and producing, and decided to pull him out to redshirt him. He said at that time he had no intention of transferring. I think most everyone assumed that he probably would eventually, and, and he did. So he's going to Miami, Manny Diaz. Uh, he's gotten a couple of guys as grad transfers, and he's hoping that D'Eric can... Uh, Give a little spark to that offense that didn't really have any this past year. 
But yet, to answer your question, he's a dual threat guy. He's extremely fast, good runner, a solid passer. Not an elite passer, but uh, certainly a, a guy who's very capable at the college level. That's a big year next year for Manny Diaz Huge. because they were really disappointing this year. Now you they're going to let Florida International with Butch Davis open up a can on your backside, and that's not a, it doesn't make wow. the people happy. Tell you one thing, I'm really impressed with the guy, Florida State, Mike Norval. I think they got a good one there. They do. He, he did a tremendous job at, at Memphis during his time there, and you know, we'll try to get that seminal ship riding because as you've talked about the ACC being a little bit down in basketball. It certainly was in football and non Clemson category. In basketball, you have three teams that look like, or that are, stone-cold locks to make locks, the tournament. Yeah. The, top, the top two teams, Louisville and Florida State, and obviously two. As Trey Jones comes up with a steal and glides in for two. But a couple others that look like they'll make it right now, but, you know, beyond that, there's a lot of work to do if they're going to wind up, you know, with more than, you know, four, maybe five bits. You know, some people are probably saying right now, why is Trey Jones on the floor? Why is, you know, you want to give players a little experience. He's played everybody on the bench. He's played everybody, basically. There are a couple guys over there, but some of the guys that Duke hasn't played yet, red shirting. So you don't have, you don't have that football rule since we were talking football, playing X number of games and then, and then coming back. The, ex the ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Get ready for the insurance-themed experience of a lifetime. It's at the end of the game at Allen Fieldhouse. is going to dominate some conversation for a few days. College game day going there on Saturday. That decision was made well before the ugliness of this evening. We'll see what type of suspensions or perhaps even more severe consequences come the way of those involved on uh, on both sides. It looked like uh, it looked like Silvio de Sosa was the one who was most involved. David McCormick was also in the middle of it, and a few other players from both teams. There'll be some suspensions, no doubt about it. Has to be. Big 12's going to come down. They should come down heavy. Because there's no place in the game for them. You know, speaking about Miami right now, you say if you're Jim Larinaga, what do you get out of here? Well, you grab your kids and you simply say, we're down 24 at the half, right? Well, they're down right now uh, 25 in the game. So we're right now one point behind Duke in second half action. So you got to take something away where you leave mentally and psychologically that you're not destroyed. And the bottom line is you try to be, you know, as positive as you can be. You don't want to look at this tape. You want to throw it away. This has been one of the most ugly games that I've ever been part of in my 40 years in terms of a mismatch. Certainly not ugly the way Duke came out and played. They played exactly what the coach said. He wanted to play hard. He wanted to execute, be efficient, and they won. And Hurt came out early, made threes, and got them running and going. Okay, so, and that is part of what I would assume now during an off week, or no game this weekend for Blue Devils. We're going to play again until next Tuesday. And so what does Mike Krzyzewski deal with his young team? He's talked a lot to us as Cassius Stanley goes in. If this team has to continue to build and grow, it's going to have ups and downs because so many of their key players are young and developing. What do they take out of a game like this? Well, you take out of the game that we played together, we played hard, we shared the ball, we shot the three, we defended, and they did all the right things. They, everything they could capably do. I think they'll give them a couple of days off as well. Because this time of the year, you want to get your bodies fresh. You want them to be healthy and strong and fresh. I'm really impressed with the athleticism of the kid Stanley. There's Wendell Moore sitting on the sideline. They hope to get him back in a couple of weeks. I'm hoping he'll be back in February. It was against Miami in the first game that Wendell Moore, who's one of their more versatile players, um, broke his hand as Justin Robinson checks into the game for the Blue Devils. David Robinson's son wears number 50. The Admiral, what an amazing job. An amazing job David's done, and he and his wife, in raising their children. His other son played a little football in Notre Dame. Yes, he did. And was the president of the senior class. And, stu yeah, student body president during his final year at South Bend. It's Alex O'Connell now scores, so he is the ninth Blue Devil to score tonight. Here's the promo, Big 12 SEC Challenge, Tennessee, Kansas, Kentucky, Texas Tech, and number one Baylor in Florida. It's all on Saturday on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Dick's going to be with Bob Wischusen 
And Baylor and Florida coming up inside the last two minutes here. And number one Baylor Bears leading the way in the Big 12 will challenge the Gators who lost a heartbreaker tonight. But much more coming up on the brawl between Kansas and Kansas State on SportsCenter tonight. Here's what Bill Self had to say. Quote, obviously it's an embarrassment, not something you'd be proud of. This is what happens. It's actually not a sign of toughness. It's a sign of immaturity, selfishness, more than it is toughness. I congratulate him for that statement because that is as factual and as honest as a coach can be. The only thing I would have liked to see is more control by the staff in keeping the players on the bench on that sideline. You know, we saw the aftermath. The clock hit zero, and you wonder how much of it was just sort of the get, they think the game's over. Yeah, and you're if that, right about if that, that. Can, if that contributed to, you know, to the guys running in and, and who ran in to try to be a peacemaker and then got caught up in it and all those types of things, but there are going to be some severe consequences, and rightfully so. And Connell's hit a couple late here. Now Connell gets on the scoreboard. For the, that's a second score in a row. Now. You know, you mentioned Justin Robinson, David's son. I was oh, I was at practice a few days ago for the Blue Devils and watching him work with the younger players and help guide them just really epitomizes what a what a great teammate he, he is. And that starts with leadership at home. I know there's oh, David. David. David is on a board of directors with the, it's his wife next door. I know his left. The bottom line is he epitomizes the family concept. He's just a terrific humanitarian, great person. O'Connell got our our man O'Connell's got to work on those numbers in the last minute. <laughs> yeah, David, he's wearing that blue cap. He better get a Naval Academy hat on. <laughs> Anthony Walker working on Justin Robinson. David's one of two players in my 40 years that I got up and gave a standing ovation when he played and fouled out of the game. There's O'Connell again. He's got a yeah. quick eight. Yeah, he wants double figures. He had, did he finish? He had 45 and about, I don't know, 18 rebounds exactly against Kentucky. And a couple phantom fouls put him on the sideline. And I got up out of my seat. And Keith Jackson was laughing. I can't remember where I parked my car at the airport, but I can remember that. That <laughs> was a Kansas game. Jack White with the steal. And they, they want Mike Buckmeyer, who was a who was a sidekick for Zion Williamson last year in the post-game news conferences. The crazies are urging Mike to let one fly, but I don't think we're going to see a repeat of Kansas, Kansas State, and it is finished. It was over early. It's officially finished now. Duke with a 30-point win, 80-59. For Dick Vitale, Brooke Weiss, Broden, our entire ESPN crew, I'm Reese Davis.